Could you give us a, a little more on that idea? How does Bridgewater adapt to the new world order that you've been thinking about for a long time, I should add? Anybody who is familiar with your writing and your speaking knows that. So I presume that some of the things that you're doing have been in the works for a little while, but nevertheless, here we are. It's a different, it's a different place than we were 11 months ago. To answer your question, there's, there's a business answer to the question, how do we do operate business-wise and also portfolio? I'd like to emphasize the portfolio because I think that's probably most relevant to other people. Um, I, I, um, there, there's a period of, uh, I think, great uncertainty and great risk. Um, and so um, I think there are three words, um, diversification, um, liquidity, and then differentiation. Um, we uh, we want to get we want to make sure that our investors are not uh, just uh, concentrated in some of the traditional markets. So diversification of how to do that well can reduce risk without reducing uh, opportunity, and that means currency diversification, including the reserve currencies. How much exposure is to the reserve currencies? But it means currency diversification, as asset class diversification country diversification, and that should be the starting point of portfolios. In terms of liquidity, it allows you the flexibility to change as circumstances change. And differentiation is the most important consideration now. There are two different worlds. There are worlds that will be orderly and will prosper in this kind of an environment, and you could see it. And that differentiation versus other worlds and markets related to that that will uh, be bankrupt and disorderly. That kind of differentiation is important. As far as the business goes, um, uh, we have um, you know the different location considerations and long relationships that we're building on. Uh, Ray, I'm, I'm going to ask you to continue because you just said something that that at the very least interested me. This idea of bankruptcy and disorderliness. Where do you see that? Well, you could see it. Um, it's reflected in the income statements and balance sheet. Every individual, every company, every country um, is their good, how well they are, depends on how much their income is relative to their expenses and how much their assets are relative to their liabilities. So you can see radical differences in the financial consequences of that. Second, the ability, the, the proximity to those who are printing and distributing money. Are you a recipient of that? For example, a lot of the third world is not a recipient of that and is not in good financial situations. And then there is order, uh, political and also social order. So it, when you could see it differentiated in the countries that are controlling the virus and behaving orderly and well together. So you could see those differentiations reflected in the market's behavior, and you can also see it reflected in the political and social conditions. Well, we know that markets are discounting mechanisms, Ray. I don't need to tell you interest rates at zero, but I'll remind everybody that stocks keep rising to new records, and not just here in the United States, but globally. P.E. ratios haven't been this high since the dot-com era, the dollar. Uh, to your point about currencies, Ray, has slumped to a two and a half year low. Do asset prices and valuations make sense given the economic fundamentals, some of which we've talked about here in this panel discussion, and for that matter, the policy outlook and what we can expect from a Biden administration? Ray, what do you think? Um, you know, when we look at interest rate, uh, markets we we look at the earnings yield when we look at stocks and we look at pe's they're they're basically yields and um, the capacity of central banks to pr to print money and buy financial assets has essentially let the bond market to go to multiples that are somewhere between a hundred times you know you put a dot you put a dollar out and you'll get your money back in a hundred years it's because of the nature of, so it's as a hundred time multiple. You have to compare stock multiples 
to bond multiples. And so the capacity of central banks to put liquidity into the system and to have that liquidity go to um, uh, produce high multiples is very uh, real. It also changes the economics of borrowing. So that encourages the leveraging and it, the changes. So the financial flows that we're seeing, the market behavior is reflective of that. I, in my opinion, don't own bonds uh, and don't own cash because they're producing a lot of debt and producing a lot of money to fund it. And so that's changing the nature of capital flows. It's also changing how, it, how those flows go to China in terms of the comparison of that market, particularly as it opens up. So I think it's behaving sensibly, but don't use old multiples as reflections of the limitations of what's expensive.